Now look at that. Hey, if you've never had homemade ravioli, you are in for a treat. Let me tell you what. Let me put a little of this grated cheese over the top. This is a cheese ravioli that I fixed. And this is all homemade. Homemade uh, with from scratch. The sauce, the filling on the ravioli, and the pasta itself. If you want to learn how to do this, watch this video. And you'll find out it's just not that hard. Welcome back to Texas Cooking. This is S.A. Trotter. Hey, today we're going to work on ravioli, okay? So, what I'm going to do right now is just mix up some garlic. Fix that up for uh, the sauce. In a little bit we're going to get into how to make a homemade sauce for your ravioli. How to prepare the pasta for your ravioli, the filling for your ravioli. Put it all together and have it come out looking fabulous. So, we'll get around to the sauce in just a moment. Okay, we're going to talk about how to make the pasta. Uh, this is a really simple process and really anybody should know how to do it. First, I've put one cup of flour, and this is just all-purpose flour, in the middle of this bowl. And I'm just going to make a little well in the center there, okay? Now I've cracked two large eggs. Put those in the middle of that. You're going to want a pinch of salt down in there. There we go, one pinch of salt and a dollop of olive oil. How much is that? Well, that's about that much right there. Now, take a fork, break those egg yolks, and start beating the eggs in the center of that flour, slowly pulling some of it into the egg mixture and thickening it. There we go. Now that mixes that salt, the eggs together, the uh, oil that you put down in there and from that point just start mixing that flour in. It'll ball up and once it does that's your pasta, okay? Once you've made that pasta don't mess with it any further. Just press it all together, set it aside and let it rest for a good 20 minutes. Otherwise it's going to be uh, very very difficult for you to work with it. It has a tendency to shrink real bad, okay? So just finished mixing that up. We'll show you what it looks like here in just a moment. Okay, I'm going to begin my sauce. Now what I've done for the sauce is I've begun with the, the garlic you saw me mincing at the beginning. I'm going to add a little olive oil to this and we're going to put a low flame underneath it. And that's for the sole purpose of just slightly toasting that garlic. If I toast that lightly, it'll disperse the flavor of the garlic first into that oil, but also it's going to give the garlic a little more rich flavor. To that, we're going to add some canned tomato sauce, and I have a little tomato paste too. Now, I generally don't exalt the virtues of anything that's canned. However, in, in the industry of produce, there is one thing that a lot of folks just don't know about when it comes to you know being on the farm and learning about how tomatoes are grown and where they go. The ripe tomatoes from a farm go straight into a cannery and those are the sweetest tomatoes of all. They've been ripened on the vine. Now there is a little industry ploy that's going on right now about the uh, tomato sauces uh, in versus you know buying fresh produce. They want you to buy more of these tomatoes that are vine ripened. So they cut a snippet of vine that has tomatoes on it, load that into a container and ship it off to market. Well, on the farm, that's not what vine ripened really is. Vine ripened means the tomato turned red. When it was on the vine, the vine was attached to the plant, and the plant was still planted in the ground and growing. If that's what happened, then it sweetened up the way it should. But the minute that vine becomes cut, the sweetening process stops. It ends right then and there. Uh, it perks up a little bit as it turns red, but not the way it really should. It's not like a banana. It doesn't go from green that's kind of tart to a really sweet flavor as it turns uh, a little darker. No, it's tomatoes don't change that much. So do yourself a favor. Stick with canned tomatoes if you're doing your own sauce. Unless you have a local farmer's market that has fresh, truly fresh. A lot of them will uh, lie to you on that, I've learned. And uh, we have one around here that they do a lot of that kind of lying. And, uh, or if you have a civic garden and you can pick that sucker yourself, hey, you're going to get the best tomatoes of your life. And I recommend using those first to make it nice and smooth. Run them through a food mill. Just dice them up, put them through the food mill, and you've got sauce. Okay? So, 
Now you've seen how I've begun this. I put a little bit of uh, olive oil on my garlic, toasted it until it was about the color of a peanut, and then I put in my sauce and some tomato paste. And I'm going to use that tomato paste because this time I'm going to be thinning or reducing the sauce with some wine. And I don't want it to get too thin. I want it to stick to my pasta well. Okay? Well, in a little bit we're going to put in the rest of the uh, spices and we'll move on to that. Okay, we're about to put our seasonings down into the sauce. So I'm going to start just by opening up this wine bottle. I think that's a trick I've shown you all before. No sense wasting time with the top of the wine bottle. And if you think they're catching your wine, for the most part they're not. It just trips over and we're under them. It still runs down the bottle. Okay. Now, let's start by putting some salt in there. We want to cook in a little bit of salt to bring out some of the flavors that we're going to be adding. One of the herbs I want to use is rosemary. This is dry rosemary. I do not have any fresh herbs right now, so we're going to use what I have and work with that. And it's good because this is what a lot of y'all have, and this is about technique, okay? So, my rosemary becomes these little dried spears. Okay, see what I shook out right there? That looks like just a little less than a tablespoon. Okay, take my mortar and pestle. Let's break that down some. And the reason is, is this sauce is ready quick and it will not be cooking long enough to soften these up. So if I go ahead and break them down in a mortar and pestle, then it's going to be perfect. Now, if you want to know what I took it down to, take a look there. You see that? It's just well ground, but it's not powdery. Okay? Go ahead and put that in. Now, tarragon is not generally added to sauces. However, I love the flavor of this little French herb, and I find that it does wonders for a red sauce. So there's about a teaspoon of that. I'm going to break it down just slightly. There we go, because I don't want the huge leaves in there. How about a grinding of black pepper? Now, how much is what I'm putting in there? It looks to me to be about a half a teaspoon. The oregano? Oregano will have a tendency to overwhelm the flavor of a red sauce very quickly, so kind of go light on it compared to your uh, tarragon and your basil. Now, what I'm using there is about one teaspoon. Basil, about a tablespoon. Again, break those leaves just a little bit. What that's going to do is help to release the oils. I have some powdered thyme here. I can shake this right out. And on this, you want about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. There we go. Just need to get that combined. Let this simmer for a little bit. Now, see how the sauce is holding a shape for a while? That's a bit too thick. So let's go ahead and thin it out with some of our wine. The beautiful thing about doing this, if you use the wine that you are going to uh, put with your meal, it will pair perfectly with the sauce and your guests will probably be impressed with how well the two taste together. Just a little more. There we are. As soon as this has simmered down for about 30 minutes, I have red sauce for my ravioli. Okay, it's just that easy. Give this a try. Okay, for our ravioli, we need to do a filling. I have one tub right here of fresh ricotta cheese. Well, not fresh, but it's a tub of ricotta. Get the whole milk ricotta for this. Um, I like the flavor of it a little better. Now, if you'll notice, this show is not about healthy cooking. It's generally about Texas cooking. Here I am doing an Italian dish. But this shows certain cooking technique that I think is real important to learn. So, get you ricotta. To the ricotta, I'm going to add something to spike its flavor just a little bit. And this is some grated Asiago, okay? I'm going to sprinkle in there about a quarter of a cup, okay? The rest of that I'm going to save back and use it on top of the uh, ravioli to give it a nice, sharp, and somewhat nutty-like flavor. Let's set this aside. I want to pull this forward. 
just some fresh spinach. Whenever you're making cheese ravioli, it needs spinach, okay? Now I like to use the bags of the salad green spinach primarily because they have a little more delicate tender leaf that works very well inside of uh, inside of ravioli and so it's something that you want to look for. And if you see a bruised leaf go ahead and just pull that sucker out and toss it aside the same way you would for your salad. And that's going to happen in any batch of spinach. I've been buying spinach all my life and every batch I get has a little bit of bruising. There we go. Now the reason I'm stacking all these up is because I'm going to need to slice this in such a way that it's going to fit down into that filling really easily. And what I want to do is to julienne these leaves. Put the rest of these aside. Now you're going to need your knife just wickedly sharp and in all of my videos I tell the same thing. Keep your knives as sharp as sharp can be. That way they're safer. You're less likely to force the knife through something and cut yourself. Now if you notice the reason I have the camera from this angle is so you can see this exact motion, exactly what's going on. My fingers are on the food and curled back. Get that blade right up against the knuckle so you don't cut yourself. Make your slices thin, like so. And then just slightly sl slide your hand back as you go. That's all this takes. Simple enough. larger pieces. I want to make a couple of cross cuts. There we go. So I've got small pieces and that's ready to go into my filling. There's your spinach and ricotta filling. Make sure you mix those together really well. That's what you're going to be stuffing those lovely little pasta shells with. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and finish mixing this down. It'll sort of look like uh, a loose dough. And at that point, it's ready to put inside my ravioli. We'll get on to making the ravioli here in just a moment. I have had the pasta setting for about 15-20 minutes now, and that's exactly what you want, so it'll make it workable. We're going to roll it out right here. And we're going to make some pasta now. Now, you remember earlier we mixed those two eggs with one cup of flour, a dollop of olive oil, and some salt. And that's, that's what we got right there, this cute little, this little bun of pasta. So what we're going to do at this point is just simply roll this guy out and I want to make this sheet about 1 16th of an inch thick. It needs to be thin enough that I can actually see the stripes of this cutting board through it. Once we get the pasta down to that, it's right where we want it. Now as it starts to stick a little bit, go ahead and flour it. Remember to vary your direction of rolling. So sticking to the board, pull that up. Flour. Don't worry about working that flour into it. There's enough moisture to handle that. I feel it a little thicker over on this corner, so I'm going to work that a bit. Now, now the reason that we let this stuff rest, if you'll notice how it likes to shrink back up when I stop working it, that is the exact reason that you want to let it rest. If you don't let it rest, that will be much more pronounced, okay? So go ahead, rest your pasta before trying to do this with it. Don't frustrate yourself. If you notice, we didn't use any water in this, and you do not want to try adding water to it at any time, unless you want it to turn into a glue. Now later on, when I seal the ravioli, we're going to use water for that process, but never before that. If you add water, you're going to activate the gluten in the flour, and it turns into a glue. Okay? Do not do that. Now we're down to that real 
thin effect that I'm looking for. I don't know if it shows up on that camera, but I'm seeing the stripes of this cutting board through that pasta. And it's quite distinct. Now if you notice I've got this rolled out to about 20 by 20 inches or just slightly larger and that's just right. What I'm doing now is just controlling the shrinkage. It's rolling to shrink real bad on me. It's still drawing up. I'm just being more stubborn than it is. Now, take that pasta and pull it into a half circle. See how I run a little crease on it? I didn't press hard, gently, is all it takes. That crease becomes a starting line for me, okay, off of which I'm going to run some grids on this. Now, if you do not already have one for cooking, I recommend that you purchase a paintbrush, something for watercolor use, will work fine. Pardon my stepping into the frame. Get a little water, wet the brush, and paint some lines about the size of a small ravioli. These are going to expand, all right? They're going to get bigger. So, be conservative with the size of your raviolis. If you'll notice, I get plenty of water on there. What am I doing? I'm activating the gluten in that flour, turning it into a, a nice binding glue so that when I fold this back over, it's going to connect with it and it's going to hold it together like a charm. If you're a little messy at times, don't worry about it. Don't just sleep over any of it. It's just food, okay? go. Now I'm going to come down the side over here. I'm just going to make some nice little raviolis. See those little squares starting to form. And as this uh, water works on the pasta, it's going to make those lines a little more visible as time goes. Now make sure you get it back into that crease so that when it folds over it will glue real well. Every one of these little squares is another ravioli. I got a couple of little partial pieces there. I think I can make one with that end, but not big enough there. All right. Now, I need to get my filling that we just mixed up. Remember, we made that nice filling with ricotta cheese and a little bit of Asiago. Like I said, it would bind like a soft dough. If you looky right there, that's exactly what that has done. Now I want to place one of these little balls, and that's just a little smaller than a ping pong ball, right in the center of each one of those. Well, not Texas cooking, but it is Italian cooking in Texas. Hey, we're going to be back in just a moment after I get this filled up, and I'll show you how I close it and form the little nice little pouches, those little pillows. Okay, we have just finished filling up all those little squares that I had uh, lined out. Now let's take our top layer of pasta and lay it right down over this. Now some of this might have to be stretched a little bit and some of it may even break. We will handle those breaks in time. Okay? What I'm doing is trying to get that pasta over there and stuck on that little wet edge that I had made. There we go. See I had a break right here nothing to lose sleep over. There are repair methods for that. We're going to use a, the, the tire repair method, just like you fix your car tire. Yeah, you know, you take it into the shop. That's how you fix it, right? The way they do it in the shop. Now, if you notice, I'm just tapping it down in between the raviolis with the tips of my fingers. What I'm doing is getting the top pasta to make contact with that wet pasta, and that way they become glued together. And this does not have to be perfect because you're going to have to finish it in just a moment when you cut it. Now, I have my pastas laid out. Pardon my reach. Let's just simply cut these little guys out, okay? Let's see another tear in one. Now, like I said, don't lose any sleep over imperfect pasta. 
You know, this isn't something that you're going for the uh, the gold in the in a cooking academy. You're just trying to make some homemade pasta. There we go. Now those little scraps, those are what become our patches. We'll just wet the back side of them and put them over any of the tears. And that solves that problem. Now something you need to know about these, there's air trapped in here. I'm going to take my fingers and gently press down. Do it again on this side. That burps it, it pushes that air out. I'm going to finish sealing those edges. Sometimes when you do this, a little cheese may squirt out the edge. You don't lose sleep over that. Use a knife to pull it off the board because it'll stick sometimes. There you go. Burp it. Now, if you have one of these broken spots, let's handle this right now so you know exactly what to do. First, I'm going to burp it. I'm going to seal those edges. That's the way I want them. That's a small ravioli right there. Now, I'm going to take a piece of this pasta, cut it down just slightly. Take my water, wet it, give it a moment for that gluten to activate, and just then press it over that tear, okay? And you have repaired that ravioli so that it won't cook out the center and it will become edible for your guests. And frankly, a lot of times these little patches don't even show up when they're cooked. All right? There you go. Patch your pasta, move on with life. Okay, I'm about ready to put that pasta in the water. Let's go ahead and hit the water with some salt. How much am I putting in there? About a tablespoon. Okay, that's a tablespoon to roughly a gallon of water. Now, if you notice, I don't have that water boiling. These little dumplings are easily damaged, so keep your water below a boil. If you bring it to a light simmer, that's okay. If you boil them heavy, they're going to break apart. Some of these have got some cheese sticking out of the edge a little bit. Sometimes those will leak. Most of the time they won't. Don't worry about it either way. There we are. A whole bunch of little ravioli dumplings. My friend and I are going to be kicking back, just munching out. He's been helping me, grating some cheese, making some salad. And we're going to be munching real good in a little bit. So, anyway, try your pasta. Bring that to a, uh, a, a low simmer to heat it up. You're really not trying to cook the cheeses so much as you're just trying to heat them. And then you're also cooking that pasta. And you want to cook it till it's al dente. How to check that? Simple. You're going to pull it out with a draining spoon, cut one corner off, taste it, and it's either al dente or not. And that means it just slightly has a, a firmness to the center of it. You don't want to mushy all the way through. If you got it that way, you overcooked it. So keep your cooking short on this. It's just cooking a thin layer and heating the, the, the middle. So far our pasta has now come up to a simmer. Now I've just dropped the heat to it. That's going to be enough heat to make this work. Now I'm going to pull one of these little, little pillows out of here and I'm going to cut the corner off, okay? And once I get that corner off of there, that's what I'm going to taste and test and see if that was just the right consistency on the pasta. Remember I said you wanted it a little firm. Okay? That is a little bit firm. It's firm for an al dente, so I'm just going to give it about another minute, minute and a half more, and it'll be finished. So far they've only been in there now about six, maybe seven minutes. I brought it up to uh, a boil and then just shut it down and uh, we're finishing the cooking up right now. As you can see these little guys, they, they swell right up and turns into a perfect little ravioli. You can see the spinach underneath the surface of the ravioli. That means it was thin enough, okay? So, there we have it. In a moment we're going to plate that up and let you all take a look at what it looks like. Well, I've just finished plating this up. Now we've pulled it out of the water, got it plated up with a little bit of sauce. This is a really thick sauce. It clings well and it was really strong, so I didn't use too much of it. Taste your sauce before you uh, put it on. Sprinkle a little bit of Asiago cheese over the top of it, and there you have homemade fresh ravioli. Give this a try. You're going to love it.